If some of y'all fishermen are like me, I've been screwing around for a while trying to figure out what's the best way to get a trolling motor on my kayak to sit on top. I don't have anything like a pedal drive, anything fancy like a, a rear end spoke or anything to help me out. So I put together a couple different ways you can do this. So a few months ago, about three months ago, I experimented with a side mount and then I ultimately re resulted in a rear mounted one that has a control box. I'm gonna show you both setups to figure out what's best for you. I'm gonna put some timestamps down in the description. First, I'm gonna run through some things you need to be aware of if you're gonna start going down this road of getting a trolling motor on your kayak. Uh, run through the first setup, which is probably the fastest way and a little bit cheaper. And then the second way where I resulted in doing a rear mounted one are some of the more expensive lessons and expensive items you're gonna need. It's gonna cost you a few hundred bucks to go that route. Number one is that there's really not a perfect guide of how to put a trolling motor on your kayak on the internet. The problem is there's hundreds of different models of kayaks and there's many different ways you can put a trolling motor on. You'll find side mounted ones, rear mounted ones. You'll find uh, trolling motors out there from a brand named Bigsby and a few others where they're like five, 600 bucks, but they're kind of a plug and play. You just sit it on the, the back of your kayak, mount it, and you're good to go for the most part. There's a lot of ways to go. Um, this whole video is about what worked for me and what's, and what's most cost effective. Again, you're, you're not gonna find the perfect video that says A to B, how to put your exact trolling motor on your kayak. It's just, you're not gonna find it. So you're gonna have to go through quite a few videos, some experimentation. In this video, I'm at least gonna highlight some of the things that helped me out. Down in the description again are some additional videos I watched that helped me. They're just different guys' opinions with different kayaks. I recommend watching all of them just to understand what your options are. Um, be prepared to learn some new skills, maybe buy some new tools. If you're like me, didn't really mess with electrical work, didn't really mess with, with drilling too much in your kayak. You're gonna learn a bit. You're gonna realize some stuff you need, especially if you're doing a rear mounted trolling motor. So be prepared to learn a bit. I'm also gonna say, just really study your kayak, sit in it, figure out what's gonna be the best way for you to deal with a trolling motor. So. That's where I'll jump into kind of the side mount option first. All right, so the first thing I did a few months ago is I went with this route and I'll link this aluminum bracket plate, everything down in the description. Um, it's on Amazon, it's not that expensive. But what it has you do is it has you put in a couple mounts like this. Um, it just, you click this uh, gray button to basically unlock it. So you get this mounted on you take your trolling motor and the clamps to it clamp on here and you just need a battery box like this one which i'll show you in a little bit again that's going to be in the description because that's that's a pretty solid one but you clamp your trolling motor on here and what's nice is it's pretty fast to do that when you're sitting down you've got your control arm coming out then you can just grab it turn for reverse forward whatever you want to do the issue I came into is it's putting a lot of extra weight to the side of the kayak. And if you're gonna be going down rivers or, or any current, and this is one of the only outings where I experienced this when I tried this setup, is with that current, when you're trying to turn, there's extra weight on the side of the kayak because this is leaning out so far. It causes you to have to overcompensate for turns. It causes you to have issues with paddling. That was a big thing that bothered me is if you've got your control arm or if you flip your trolling motor from down in the water to up when you are paddling when i paddle my strokes come right along the side of the kayak i would hit hit the arm um or even come all the way back and hit the plate so that's where it got pretty annoying um that's when i started trying to figure out what can i do for a rear mounted option so again this can work i'll at least link this my battery box and the trolling motor i bought for under 100 bucks down in the description it's the one i'm using on the rear so i will jump into that now okay, i'm going to start running through this rear mounted option but first we're going to start with this battery box so recommend you get a battery box if you know you're going to need to have your battery back here i considered putting it in the hatch all the way at the front 
I just didn't want to deal with getting wiring in here and running it up. I just, that's not going to happen right now, maybe in the future. So in here, I got a 50 amp hour, 12 volt battery. Um, I'll link one on Amazon that I bought, but this box is nice because it's got a USB charger. So if you ever go camping to the beach, whatever, we got some options. Um, it's got a voltage meter test. So you can actually see where your charge is at on your battery. So that's kind of nice. Um, it's got a couple different breakers. So one is to run like the trolling motor. You get a smaller one if you're gonna run different smaller accessories off this type of battery, like a maybe a fish finder. Maybe if you're charging stuff, it's got that. It's also got a standard 12 volt charger on the side for some type of like cigarette adapter. Um, again, charge your phone. So this is awesome, it's great to have. It's all pre-wired to also run in case something trips uh, a circuit. This will protect the battery and your electronics. It'll automatically shut off, which is pretty nice. So again, really recommend you do something like this, especially if you're gonna have your battery sitting in the back just so it's not exposed to the elements. So I'm gonna go through this whole setup, right? So. My wires, they're a little loose. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this, get it a little tidier. But what I've basically got going on is I've got a control box. So what I'm gonna tell you, number one, is down in the description, I have a link to a Facebook page that has the guy's phone number where I bought the instructions of the box. He literally get, sends you this mounting plate and bracket and this actuator. This actuator literally helps raise and lower the trolling motor out of the water. So you're gonna get some of the standard products and material. Now you're gonna have to go through, figure out how to do the wiring. You gotta bear that in mind, how you're gonna put together a control box. Again, he tells you just about everything you need to buy on Amazon to put this together. So I recommend you do it. It is a couple hundred bucks to get everything running, but what's awesome is that you get the ability to easily control your trolling motor without doing all the busy work of a side mount where you have a lot of great control it doesn't ruin your balance you get a lot of great speed so number one I'll just show you how my controller works and go into the steering because the steering is actually this rod so this rod if I grab it and pull forward or back it'll turn that so we'll get to that here in a sec so what's pretty nice about having the ability to just hit this switch and this lowers is that it helps get you in and out of the water quickly especially if you're going to run into something and you need to pull that thing up or if you're going in really shallow you can just raise it not have to worry about your trolling motor hitting anything hitting rocks stumps whatever it is it gets down fast it gets up out of the way fast so it just helps protect your trolling motor and again if you're going up real shallow maybe in some lily pads to flip frogs it ain't going to get in the way so you've got a great advantage you can still keep that advantage of owning a kayak where you are able to go much shallower and go places where most boaters can't go so with this thing fully lowered i'll show you once you grab this rod so this is just a standard rod that um, you'd find on like a dune buggy or someone that likes to take their jeep through sand dunes whatever it is it's just one of those white rods. I just uh, spray painted it black just to match the kayak a bit better. So when I grab this, it's my steering. So you'll find a lot of other videos where they talk about putting together uh, wires that connect all the way up to your foot pedals and then you push your feet in different directions and it helps steer. It's a viable option. Um, I just wanted something that was a lot less work and had a lot more maneuverability. So again, I pull all the way forward. I can, I can get just about every range of motion I want out of this thing. So again, you've got a lot of great motion having this rod, it's completely out of the way. Um, you'll see at least on my kayak, I got a cup holder cause I've got a uh, Old Town Topwater um, 10 foot six edition. So it's not huge, but it's got the room I need and kind of the, the setup I want. Cup holder doesn't get in the way of that. Um, my, uh, fishing pole holder here for when I'm tying bait it's not in the way of that so it is a very very solid setup again um, on my control box got a couple 
awesome thing. So the instructions this guy gives you is you get a voltage meter. So if that gets gets pretty low, if you don't have a battery box like mine that shows your um, battery charge, you can check this out. But it's also got a couple USB ports there completely available. This is a six way switch, which just means if I push it in the opposite direction, the trolling motor will start to raise itself. Um, back on the control box right here, um, this knob underneath is actually the speed control switch that was inside my trolling motor. So I sawed the head off, pulled that out, wired it all in here again. Um, you're going to be learning how to do a lot of this if you go this route and um, check out that guy's Facebook page because he gives you the instructions of how to put this together. Um, but anyways, there's I got five speeds forward, three reverse speeds, so you'll see this actually works. Which, that's that's awesome. Uh, I'm going full speed forward, shut it down, and then if I want to go in reverse, I'll just go full speed. It's pretty awesome. And either way, I can easily turn while that thing's on. It's not getting in, in the way. How this thing is mounted is very simple. This is just an aluminum sheet that he prefabricates and sends to you um, with the well nuts you need. So I've got well nuts under here because I don't have access through here. I could have cut a, some type of hatch, but it's only like a three inch area. So it's not much room to work with. So we've just got this metal plate, a pole pin that comes out. So this pole pin, if I pulled it, this portion on the opposite side of this hinge, I can take this whole thing off. So then this is only permanently fixed. So I've got well nuts just with some super glue to help seal it and keep it on there better. So it's, it's a very simple process. The whole setup, and this is coming from a guy that doesn't really know what he's doing, uh, maybe four hours, I was able to figure out everything. One final thing I wanna add that you really gotta think about, you may see in this kayak, I don't have stickers or anything yet for having this registered as a licensed watercraft with a motor. So here in the state of Michigan, if you got a watercraft, a kayak, anything, and you're putting a trolling motor on it, you have to get it registered with the state as a watercraft. Here in Michigan, it's not that expensive. It lasts about three years when you have to renew again. I suggest you check your state. Most states are like this where they require some type of licensing if you're gonna fix a motor of any kind, whether it's gas powered or electric, to a watercraft, even if it's only 10 feet long. Um, some things you might want to consider as well is the lighting laws. So in Michigan, we got laws where I gotta have green and uh, red lights up front. So I've got LED strips that you'll see right here. I've got these LED strips. They turn red and green up front. I've also got a pole to mount on the back here. You'll see on these track mounts, I've actually got a light to go here. Again, in Michigan, you need to have a, and this is only if it's dark out. So most of the time I won't need my lights on, but I will need to have the rear mounted light and I've got this all wired up front to connect to my small 12 volt battery to put in here. So these all light up on both sides, red and green, because those are expected as well. So again, check with your state. They've got different regulations, but it's very important. So I hope this helps you all out. Remember, check out everything in the description because there's a lot of videos you need to watch. There's a Facebook page you need to go to if you're interested in doing a rear mount. Otherwise, you can just do the side mount. It's cheaper, it's faster, and those are all linked in, down in the descriptions. So I appreciate y'all watching. If you got any questions, any follow-up videos you want me to do, just leave them down in the comments. I'll check this video out occasionally down the road and help y'all out.